So today, you are going to learn how to sink underwater. Because I want to take you to my underwater world. No, don't hold your breath like that, because you won't sink down into the water like this. All puffed up like a puffer fish, holding in all the air, you will bob up to the surface like a duck toy. Being underwater is a transforming experience, and I want yours to be beautiful. But you can't get there if you're hanging on to fear, doubts, and things you don't need. So you need to learn how to let go. Let's do this together. Inhale and exhale with a count of five. And when you exhale, make sure you exhale all the way until you empty lungs before you inhale again. Ready? Inhale. Your lungs are expanding and exhale. Inhale and exhale as slow as you can. Your heart rate will slow down. Everything will slow down. You are learning to let go of your breath and fear. And you are learning to trust your body and the water. Let's do this one more time. Inhale. And exhale. You are learning to let go. Umi wa hiroi na okina. That means the ocean is wide, the ocean is huge in Japanese. I used to sing that song in this inflatable pool and pretend that I was a mermaid. Raise your hand who wants to be a mermaid. Good, good. Merman? Good. I wanted to be a mermaid and live underwater. I was born and raised in Japan. My father took us to the ocean almost every summer right outside Tokyo. 1989, we moved to the US. One summer, we were in a terrible car accident. I was thrown out the car, sent to ICU by helicopter, fractured my entire body, and I had a major brain injury. I almost lost my life, but instead, I lost my father, who was in the driver's seat. It was a miracle I survived after all those injuries. My family and friends told me that my father protected me, and I am a survivor for a reason. At that time, I didn't know what it really meant but I had a huge, I felt a huge pressure because I didn't want my father's death to be in vain. Years later, I discovered scuba diving and I found out that I had a talent for being underwater. Because I was good at breathing, I was in the water longer than everybody else. I felt like I belong here. I'm almost mermaid. <laughs> That same year, I went to Venezuela and became a dive master. I started taking pictures of marine life. I absolutely loved the underwater world. Scuba diving and underwater photography became my passion. One day, I read that scuba diving and swimming can be alternative medicines for anxieties and depressions. I was, having, I was actually struggling with my depression at that time. I could not get out from my room or talk to anyone. I felt anxious, angry, and frustrated, and sad. I was not being myself. And it was getting worse day by day, and I knew I had to look for help. I saw psychologists, psychiatrists, and therapists. Nobody knew what caused my depression. I also have no family history. Maybe the chemical imbalance from my brain injury. 
I was on medications for over a year, and I was not feeling better at all. And I even felt worse. So I wanted to believe in these articles about scuba diving and swimming because it was my only hope to get better. And I remember when I scuba dive, all the worries and angers, I can let go. It's like water sets me free. When I'm touched by water from 360 degrees, I can feel this peaceful energy swelling into my body. This is my meditation space. I can be myself and be free. Since scuba diving is not easily accessible for me, I push myself to go swimming every day. I felt better almost immediately, and I dropped, for the, I dropped those medications for being underwater. That's why I love creating images with people underwater, because underwater portrait photography has the same psychological benefits and I am able to share that experience with my clients underwater. Everything is different. The lighting, the shapes, the sounds. The subjects, hair, face, and dress move underwater. Everything's slow and peaceful. It's like you're dreaming. What's gonna happen underwater? I never know. And it's challenging. I love that mystery, and underwater portrait photography became my passion. I've been underwater photographer for over 10 years, and back in 2013, I launched a campaign called Underwater Healer About Face to help cancer survivors rediscover their beauty through underwater portrait photography. Ever since, I donate my time and reach out to survivors of cancer, domestic violence, people with PTSD and physical disabilities. This project is so important to me because I love to see the beautiful and mysterious transformations that happen underwater. I want to give back to the community and spread this project to all over the world. I've met so many survivors who had shared the powerful stories, and I want to show you some of the subjects I've worked with. This is Drina. When she was eight years old, she almost drowned. Ever since, she hasn't been in the water deeper than her knee level. She contacted me to do this underwater maternity photo shoot because she wanted to overcome her fear by doing this beautiful photo project. In the beginning, she was terrified. Within 20 minutes, she conquered her biggest fear and she couldn't stop crying after the photo shoot. Facing her fear helped to release the trauma she experienced as a child. And this is her first time ever underwater selfie shot. She looks beautiful, right? I have a client who wants to stay anonymous. PTSD she experienced from the domestic abuse was much, much more difficult than dealing with breast cancer. She was in a very abusive relationship. Thanks to the police and her mother, she finally got to escape but she was too scared of dark and being alone and sought psychosomatic help for her PTSD. Now she's in a healthy relationship and got married, but then she was diagnosed with breast cancer. During her treatment, she said, she told me that she went to islands. She discovered water helped the painful swelling in her body. She also said, underwater, nobody judges her, and she feels completely safe. This is Chelsea. When she was 17 years old, she was in a car accident. Her driver was drunk. The car smashed into a tree, crashed into a tree, and the, the accident damaged her spinal cord. 
She's in the wheelchair for the rest of her life. This was not her first time being in the water, but it was her first time completely submerging underwater. Also, it was her first time opening her eyes and smile at the same in the water. Chelsea said it was a challenge, it was a challenging experience. She found a new courage to feel beautiful and strong. And she also said underwater, she felt the freedom for not relying on her wheelchair. This is Jared. He's an army veteran. During his service in Afghanistan, his right arm was blown off. Blown off. He has PTSD, traumatic brain injury, chronic phantom limb pain, and shrapnel still in his body. After he discovered scuba diving, he found out that underwater is the only place that he doesn't feel any pain. Ocean is his therapy, and water means peace, tranquility, and freedom. He is also a member of Dive Warriors, the organizations who helps disabled veterans with scuba diving. The day after the photo shoot with Jared, the Dive Warriors took me out to go scuba dive in Catalina Island. It meant a lot to me that I was part of their lives, even just for one day. We have different backgrounds and disabilities, but Underwater, we were all equal, safe, and pain-free. I cannot wait to meet them underwater in the future again. The last survivor I want to introduce you to today is Lori, a breast cancer survivor. I'm going to play this video. Hi, my name is Lori Ratliff. I am a breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed almost 30 years ago with metastatic breast cancer and doing this underwater photo shoot with Arena was pretty wonderful. Um, it was exciting, but relaxing and fun, and she made the whole process amazing. Thank you. She's in the audience today, and you get to meet her just in a moment. <laughs> And if you are ever curious and brave to jump in the water with me, come talk to me right outside, of, outside after the presentation. I can give you a special discount. And a portion of your session fee will go towards this campaign for survivors like Chelsea, Jared, and Lori. At the conference like ISPAT, International Conference on Evidence-Based Aquatic Therapy, I meet people who study the benefits of total immersion for centuries in India, China, throughout Europe, people go into the water to feel whole again. Medical science knows that total immersion has the profound benefits. Nervous, cardiovascular, musculoskeletal, and immune systems are improved with hydrotherapies. But I'm most interested in how water reconnects us to who we really are. Water reminds us of our wholeness and restores us psychologically. Medical science is beginning to measure the positive and life-changing effects of total immersion, specifically psychological effects that water has on us. I'm most interested in working with the scientists at the forefront of this research. If you know any scientists, psychologists, or PhD students who will be interested in this topic, please let me know because I am available to work together. My family and friends told me I am a survivor for a reason. Remember I told you about the depression and nobody knew what triggered my brain. And I went swimming every day. I finally figured it out. I cannot lie or hide underwater. Water makes me honest. So I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the truth. I haven't told anybody at the time, but the day of the car accident, 
I was actually driving first. I got tired, so I asked my father to switch with me. He was also tired after working long hours for the family, but of course, he wouldn't say no. My, I wish I didn't have to ask him. I could have saved his life. My guilt was huge, and I didn't know how to handle it. I still have regrets and angers. But being underwater helps me let go of that. I cannot change the past, but what I can do is to make, to give back to the community and make my father proud. As an artist, I am fascinated with the process of capturing that moment when we let go and remember that we are strong, loved, safe. Underwater, we can all let go of our regrets and remember who we really are. I think we are all survivors for a reason. Thank you. And now um, I can bring in Lori and a breast cancer survivor, and we can do Q&A. Slight correction on the video that she showed. I'm actually a 20-year um, cancer survivor. Um, I'd been talking with her just before that about um, how long I'd been married, which was almost 30 years. So that kind of slipped out. Um, my mother died from breast cancer uh, when I was 23. And when I was diagnosed at 34, I decided that I was not going to be quiet about it like she was, that it happens to so many more people than you realize that I was going to talk about it. And so I have been talking about it for the past 20 years to anybody who will listen, because especially when I was first diagnosed, I really didn't have much contact with anybody. Um, I didn't know anybody like me. Um, and then as the internet began to grow and people began to put more things out there, I began to see images of women like me that I wished I had seen in the beginning. Um, so there are several projects, uh, photography projects that people have done called the Scar Project, Grace Project. And I'd seen those pictures and just been entranced by them and realized I'm only getting older. So if I want to do something different, if I want to be brave, now's the time. And this is something that I can say that I've, you know, I've seen underwater photos and thought they were beautiful, but thought, oh, no, not me. Um, but then decided, yeah, me. So I Googled. Uh, <laughs> breast cancer, photography, portraits, whatever, and the very first thing that came up was Arena with underwater, and I said, that's it, that's what I'm going to try. And so I contacted her, and pretty quickly we set it up, and uh, it was harder than I thought, it was easier than I thought, it was a lot more fun than I thought. Um, and. I would like, love to do it like every month. I'd love to go back and do it. Just like she was saying, that sense that, of being underwater, um, the calmness, the support. Um, because over the years, treatment and cancer can take a lot of toll on your body. There's a lot of collateral damage. So for the past 15 years, I've dealt with some really serious chronic pain issues and mobility. And way long ago, I used to be a dancer. And I don't get to do that anymore. And what I discovered is going underwater, I can feel like I can dance again. Yeah, and looking at her toes, pointy toes, she's a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful underwater. Uh, Lori, would you mind telling us a little bit more about what the experience was like the first time you got into the water? Um, I'm really curious about what that was like, what it was like being photographed underwater for the first time. 
Um, when we started the session, um, I actually had a dress on. I wasn't, I was unsure if I wanted to do a unclothed Ooh. session. I was, yeah, yeah. Uh, that scared me a lot. Um, and obviously, I've had a bilateral mastectomy. I chose not to have reconstruction. Uh, and when I talked to Raina about it, she asked me if I would be doing it topless. And I was saying, I'm really not sure. Um, and she encouraged me by saying that it can help other women to see somebody like them if I did feel comfortable enough doing it. And that is exactly what I wished I had had. And so that kind of tipped the scales. Um, but I started in a dress because I was nervous. And it feels very strange to get in the water fully clothed. Um, but it was a warm pool. And going underwater, it, it, you're, you can be very surprised how buoyant you are. So I, I would think I would sink, but I would just pop right back up. And so what she was talking about releasing all of the air was a challenge to do that and feel like I'm not going to run out of air underwater. Um, but the more you did it, the more you realized that it, was, it made it easier to stay relaxed underwater, to let that all out. And you can sink and really just relax. So that was uh, surprising and a little bit of a struggle to remember that and try not to make my face do the, the fish <laughs> and, you know, oh, open your eyes and, mm -hmm. you know, oh, here there's fabric and struggling with that. But once I kind of calmed down about the whole thing, it just became easy because of the water made everything mm -hmm. fluid and movable. Yeah, and uh, the water temperature helps a lot because this pool was indoor heated and 92 degrees. And you almost don't want to come out from the water. <laughs> yeah. And I've worked with so many different temperatures of the pool. And the cold one, they cannot smile. You know, you just go, the shoulders are up, and you're cramped. And you try to smile with it, and it's just not natural. So the temperature, I always ask whenever I look for a pool, it needs to be in a certain uh, number. And this one, this, this one was really easy. Arena, you mentioned a little bit about survivor's guilt. And I think that's becoming more of a topic that we talk about. But I thought it'd be interesting to hear from both of you even your perspectives on that guilt that we feel when we lose a loved one. First, I didn't realize that was my, um, that was what that was causing my depression. And also, I just, it was like, a, um, it was hard for me to, to accept it, that accept his death to begin with. Um, and also, I was trying to ignore my uh, problem. So when I started to face that, this is my, um, this was my like, major problem that I am not accepting and letting it go. And that medications, I, I you know, relied on the medications but it was not working for me. And I was searching and searching for the better result. And then I started to find out all the other articles about scuba diving and swimming. And scuba diving is my favorite sport. And my, I can say it was my first hobby. So that's why I'm still like diving since then. And I cannot do that in San Francisco. It's so cold. And then um, you can't not see anything. Maybe Monterey when it's really great. Is there anybody scuba divers here? Yes. But I highly recommend learning scuba diving, whether here or the uh, diving destinations, because you feel so free. Just like when I told you guys about Jared. He's an army veteran with disabilities. And the water is the only place that he doesn't feel any pain. And I don't have the physical pain like that. But I certainly feel so much like relieved from the stress. Or same thing as going into the water or the hot tub. You guys go to the hot tub. 
like a spa and hot tub. In Asia, I grew up in Japan, so every almost every night we go to we go into the baths and like my father, I remembered he you know take a bath and to release the all stress from that day, like long hours, and. And I really believe that the water really helps me, so I could drop those medications. And then I'm still swimming every day, almost every day. So it is my the way to to heal, to outlet, to heal my survivor guilt. Survivor's guilt is something that crept up on me um, in the beginning, um, especially since I was diagnosed metastatic, which means that the cancer had already spread. Um, to my bones, and my life expectancy was actually not, statistically, not that long. So every year that I went on, it was great that, you know, I'm still here, yay. Um, but as more time went on, um, and I would talk to other cancer people who have been diagnosed, and I would say, hey, I've been here, you know, 10 years, 15 years. It felt good because I felt like I could give them hope to say, see, sometimes people do survive longer than they say you will. But then it got to a certain point where I was afraid I was giving people false hope. And so many people that I had met and heard about or just talked to had passed away. And I hadn't. And there's no explanation for it. So I started to not want to talk about it and not want to tell people how long I'd been a survivor. Because it, you get that question of why me? Why me? Why me? Why me? So it's something I'm dealing with right now. And I'm finding it very difficult to, um, you know, I'm happy to be alive, of course. But there's also that sense of people lose so many people to cancer that I worry that I remind people that they lost someone. So it's an ongoing struggle, but um, this has also had been part of the process, and this really helps too, is asking about, because that's a tough subject. Because most people will say, just to be happy you're alive, and it's like, it's not that simple. Um. In relation to therapy and also kind of your pathway specifically, Irina, in kind of searching for what's, what's broken about me, um, I'm curious, does underwater therapy um, produce a place of more openness with speaking? And is that part of the goal in, in undergoing different kinds of therapy, um, mostly because um, in uh, say like Asian or Asian American spaces, maybe discussion and openness around words is not as available or people don't have the same tool set. So I'm curious, um, maybe it's a two-parter. One, uh, for you, what was your therapy journey and would you have done it differently? Um, or, and two, um, have you found that Asian or Asian American clients have a lot more uh, joy and healing through underwater therapy? I cannot really compare from the, uh, the nationalities, but it was, um, hmm. I think they're all equal. Like in the, everybody's different, like uh, regardless of how, what you are. Um, it depends on the temperature, but also how you grew up and how you are reacting. Like, like Drina never, hasn't been in the water deeper than her knee level, or the people who are just swimmer, they thought they can do it all. But actually, all the swimmers, they had all the confidence, but sinking down vertically is completely different than what swimmers would do. So they were having, they were struggling submerging underwater. So I tell, I know that all, everybody has different backgrounds, but the first five, 10 minutes, we all struggle because it's a new space and it's a surprise because in a picture like this, you think you can do this, right? You can do it and it looks so easy. But actually, when you are in the water and sink down, it depends on 
the muscle mass too. The muscle is heavy, like weight, so you can sink more. Um, but sometimes you can't. Um, so the first five, 10 minutes is a struggle for everybody to adjust in a different world. And then after the 10 minutes, everybody has the, the similar transformation, ex transformative experience. And, and everybody has the different types of transformation. And my goal is to see them smile after the photo sessions or see them when I show them the preview photos from my camera, I want them to laugh. That's my goal. Because laughing is really important for our lives. Even just to watch movies and laugh. And the laughing is, these days we're so busy. We're not even having your own time. And being underwater, I am providing you a space for you to have fun and free. Uh, she was asking about your therapy journey and looking back if you would have done anything differently. I, don't, I cannot think of anything else to do because I love water. After I, scu after I discovered scuba diving, I knew that was the only place I can meditate because I'm usually spazzy and I cannot stay in one spot. But in underwater, is the, you know, all the noise block and you hear all the white noise, and you can focus on yourself. And after I found out that space, I thought, OK, this is it. Then since then, I haven't looked for anything. I do yoga, and I do yoga helps. Um, it depends on the teacher. <laughs> but yeah, I think other than that, I haven't been looking. I'm just focused on swimming every day. I guess in terms of creating the photo sets, do you have an idea of a theme beforehand or does one sort of present itself afterwards? I guess this, this shot and the previous one, there seem to be abstract hearts, both in her shape of her there and the fabric in the previous slide. Mm -hmm. So was that yeah. on purpose or happy accident? <laughs> happy accident, I think. I had not noticed that. Yeah, um, yeah, it looks like heart. So every, the things are moving in the water constantly, and it's hard to say, can you do this and can you do that? Especially with the fabrics, it's it's a moving, you know, the wavy motions, and always I want them to be themselves. And I don't I don't usually tell them what to do because this is a place that they can be free and be themselves. So I ask them, I ask her to just do whatever you want to do. Just let me know. How, how does a conversation kind of go um, with uh, the client when, you know, this kind of planning of, uh, um, you know, what kind of clothing to bring or like uh, uh, props or, you know, lack for a better word? Um, I guess, you know, um, sometimes people might be or might wear makeup or, you know, something, but then, you know, um, you know, what if that runs underwater or something, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, like, how's that conversation go? Yeah, so I do have that consultation, like conversation on Skype or in person so that we can trust each other. Because in the water, we can't talk or communicate. So uh, I would like to uh, get that trust before and outside the water. And the question is usually like the makeup and also a dress or what do they, you know, where they can get. And the makeup wise, it's really up to them. Sometimes they don't want to be, they don't want to wear anything. They want to go natural. And that's totally fine. It's what, it's their choice. And if they want to wear something, and I have the basic ones, and they're all, uh, usually from uh, the theatrical makeup store. There's one in San Francisco, and that's uh, water resistant. It just don't smear your face. <laughs> but other than that, it doesn't, it doesn't come off. And I let them wear it by themselves, or I apply on their face, just like the basic ones. And or they do like to get their own, so that's part of their process, you know, to have fun and go shopping. And you can go get the clothes from the thrift store. You can damage it because it's cheaper than buying the, the expensive new clothes. So I want them to have fun for this like 
process and to pump up for the photo shoot. The first photos you had were those motion photography. How did you do those? And is it like an overlay animation on top of a photo? Or the water was all moving, but the people were still? Oh, the, yes. I used the, the app called um, Flotograph. And you can download it on your phone, but I used the browser version. And you can use, you use your flat image and put the effects on it. And it's, it's pretty good for the marketing and imagery. Yeah. All right, please join me in giving a big round of applause for both Irena and for Lori. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.